Diversity in Organisms Introduction Have you ever thought of the multitude of life forms that surround us? Each organism is different from all others to a lesser or greater extent. Life also ranges from colourless or even transparent worms to brightly coloured birds and flowers. This bewildering variety of life around us has evolved on the earth over millions of years. We look for similarities among the organisms which will allow us to put them into different classes and then study different classes or groups as a whole. Hierarchy of Classification The classification Whittaker proposed has five kingdoms Monera, Prostita, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia and is widely used. These groups are formed on the basics of their cell structure, mode and source of nutrition and body organization. Further classification is done by naming the subgroups at various levels as given in the following scheme. Kingdom, phylum for animals, division for plants, class, order, family genus, species. Thus, by separating organisms on the basis of a hierarchy of characteristics into smaller and smaller groups, we arrive at the basic unit of classification, which is a species. Monera These organisms do not have a defined nucleus or organelles, nor do any of them show multicellular body designs. On the other hand, they show diversity based on many other characteristics. The mode of nutrition of organisms in this group can be either by synthesizing their own food, autotrophic, or getting it from the environment, heterotrophic. This group includes bacteria, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria, and mycoplasm. Some examples are shown in the figure. Protista. This group includes many kinds of unicellular, eukaryotic organisms that use appendages such as hair-like cilia or whip-like flagella for moving around. Their mode of nutrition can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Examples are unicellular algae, diatoms and protozoans. Fungi. These are heterotrophic eukaryotic organisms. They use decaying organic material as food and are therefore called saprophytes. Many of them have the capacity to become multicellular organisms at certain stages in their lives. They have cell walls made of a tough complex sugar called sitin. Examples are yeast and mushrooms. Some fungal species live in permanent mutually dependent relationships with blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. Such relationships are called symbiotic. These symbiotic life forms are called lichens. Plantae. These are multicellular eukaryotes with cell walls. They are autotrophs and use chlorophyll for photosynthesis. Thus, all plants are included in this group. Since plants and animals are most visible forms of the diversity of life around us. Animalia. These include all organisms which are multicellular eukaryotes without cell walls. They are heterotroph. Hierarchy of classification. Plantae. The first level of classification among plants depends on whether the plant body has well differentiated distinct components. The next level of classification is based on whether the differentiated plant body has special tissues for the transport of water and other substances within it. Further classification looks at the ability to bear seeds and whether the seeds are enclosed within fruits. Thallophyta Plants that do not have well differentiated body design fall into this group. The plants in this group are commonly called algae. These plants are predominantly aquatic. Examples are Spirogyra, Eulothric, Scladophora, and Cara. Bryophyta. These are called the amphibians of the plant kingdom. The plant body is commonly differentiated to form stem and leaf like structures. However, there is no specialized tissue for the conduction of water and other substances from one part of the plant body to another. Examples are moss, funaria and marchantia. Pteridophyta 
In this group, the plant body is differentiated into roots, stem and leaves and has specialized tissue for the conduction of water and other substances from one part of the plant body to another. Some examples are marsilia, ferns and horsetails, gymnosperms. This term is made from two Greek words. Gymno means naked and sperma means seed. The plants of this group bear naked seeds and are usually perennial, evergreen and woody. Examples are pines and deodor. Angiosperms Angiosperms are also called flowering plants. Plant embryos in seeds have structures called seed leaves because in many instances they emerge and become green when the seed germinates. The angiosperms are divided into two groups on the basis of the number of cotyledons present in the seed. Plants with seeds have a single cotyledon and are called monocotyledonous or monocots. Plants with seeds having two cotyledons are called dicots. Animalia These are organisms which are eukaryotic, multicellular and heterotrophic. Their cells do not have cell walls. Most animals are mobile. They are further classified based on the extent and type of the body design differentiation found. Porifera the word porifera means organisms with holes. These are non-motile animals attached to some solid support. There are holes or pores all over the body. These lead to a canal system that helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen. These animals are covered with a hard outside layer or skeleton. They are commonly called sponges and are mainly found in marine habitats. Coelentrata. These are animals living in water. They show more body design differentiation. There is a cavity in the body. The body is made of two layers of cells. One makes up cells on the outside of the body and the other makes the inner lining of the body. Some of these species live in colonies, corals, while others have a solitary lifespan, hydra. Jellyfish and sea anemones are common examples. Platyhelminthus The body of animals in this group is far more complexly designed than in the two other groups we have considered so far. The body is bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that the left and the right halves of the body have the same design. There are three layers of cells from which differentiated tissues can be made, which is why such animals are called triploblastic. However, there is no true internal body cavity or coelom in which well-developed organs can be accommodated. The body is flattened dorsiventrally, meaning from top to bottom, which is why these animals are called flatworms. They are either free-living or parasitic. Some examples are free-living animals like planariums or parasitic animals like liver flukes. Nematoda the nematode body is also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic. However, the body is cylindrical rather than flattened. There are tissues but no real organs, although a sort of body cavity or pseudocelum is present. These are very familiar as parasitic worms causing diseases such as the worms causing elephantiasis, filarial worms, or the worms in the intestines, roundworms or pinworms. Some examples are shown in the figure. Annelida Annelid animals are also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic, but in addition, they have a true body cavity. This allows true organs to be packaged in the body structure. There is thus extensive organ differentiation. This differentiation occurs in a segmental fashion with the segments lined up one after the other from head to tail. These animals are found in a variety of habitats, fresh water, marine water, as well as land. Earthworms and leeches are familiar examples. Arthropoda These animals are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented. There is an open circulatory system and so the blood does not flow in well-defined blood vessels. The coelomic cavity is blood-filled. They have jointed legs. The word 
Arthropoda means jointed legs. Some familiar examples are prawns, butterflies, houseflies, spiders, scorpions and crabs. Mollusca. In the animals of this group, there is bilateral symmetry. The coelomic cavity is reduced. There is little segmentation. They have an open circulatory system and kidney-like organs for excretion. There is a foot that is used for moving around. Examples are snails and mussels. Echinodermata. These are exclusively free-living marine animals. They are triploblastic and have a coelomic cavity. They also have a peculiar water-driven tube system that they use for moving around. They have hard calcium carbonate structures that they use as a skeleton. Examples are starfish and sea urchins. Protochordata. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and have a coelom. In addition, they show a new feature of body design, namely a notochord, at least at some stages during their lives. The notochord is a long rod-like support structure, cord meaning string, that runs along the back of the animal, separating the nervous tissue from the gut. It provides a place for muscles to attach for ease of movement. Protochordats are marine animals. Examples are balanoglossus, herdmania, and Amphioxus. Protochordata. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, and have a coelom. In addition, they show a new feature of body design, namely a notochord, at least at some stages during their lives. The notochord is a long rod like support structure that runs along the back of the animal separating the nervous tissue from the gut. It provides a place for muscles to attach for ease of movement. Protochordates may not have a proper notochord present at all stages in their lives or for the entire length of the animal. Protochordates are marine animals. Examples are Balanoglossus, Herdmania and Amphioxus. Vertebrata. These animals have a true vertebral column and internal skeleton, allowing a completely different distribution of muscle attachment points to be used for movement. All chordates possess the following features. Have a notochord, have a dorsal nerve cord, are triploblastic, have paired gill pouches, are coelomate. Vertebrates are grouped into five classes. Pisces. These are fish. They are exclusively aquatic animals. Their skin is covered with scales. They obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills. The body is streamlined and a muscular tail is used for movement. They are cold-blooded and their hearts have only two chambers, unlike the four that humans have. They lay eggs. We can think of many kinds of fish, some with skeletons made entirely of cartilage, such as sharks, and some with a skeleton made of both bone and cartilage, such as tuna or rahu. Amphibia. These animals differ from the fish in the lack of scales, in having mucous glands in the skin and a three-chambered heart. Respiration is through either gills or lung. They lay eggs. These animals are found both in water and on land. Frogs, toads and salamanders are some examples. Reptilia. These animals are cold-blooded, have scales, and breathe through lungs. While most of them have a three-chambered heart, crocodiles have four heart chambers. They lay eggs with tough coverings and do not need to lay their eggs in water, unlike amphibians. Snakes, turtles, lizards, and crocodiles fall in this category. Reptilia These animals are cold-blooded, have scales, and breathe through lungs. While most of them have a three-chambered heart, crocodiles have four heart chambers. They lay eggs with tough coverings and do not need to lay their eggs in water, unlike amphibians. Snakes, turtles, lizards and crocodiles fall in this category. Aves these are warm-blooded animals and have a four-chambered heart. They lay eggs. There is an outside covering of feathers and two forelimbs are modified for flight. They breathe through lungs. All birds fall in this category. Mammalia 
Mammals are warm-blooded animals with four-chambered hearts. They have mammary glands for the production of milk, to nourish their young. Their skin has hairs as well as sweat and oil glands. Most mammals familiar to us produce live young ones. However, a few of them like the platypus and the echidna lay eggs and some like the kangaroos give birth to very poorly developed young ones. Some examples are shown in the figure.